Come see. Pull up! Uh. <laughs> we are back for another episode of Building the Nancy Halo Retreat. Today we're going to build the porch stairs. Jamie and Jason are building stairs here. Oh, these are real I thought stairs. this was the real stairs. No, these are the digging template, okay? Yeah, digging template um, stair. So they know where to dig the footing for the bottom of these stairs and put the posts and we don't waste their time digging holes in the wrong place. Something else here is these are extra wide runs on these so that the stairs would actually go out far enough where they didn't land in the pit. So these are custom designed digging template, make the foundation, then make the real stairs, right? I just want to make sure it looks right, you know, and it's going to walk right too. Since Are you gonna walk up that right now? Abnormal. Well, Jason can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone else make a digging template like Jamie did. Usually you just use the real stringers, but we were really toying around with what was gonna work well here due to the fact we had to get these stairs out and away from the deck a little further than normal. What we're doing now is pouring a footing for underneath the post, and then we'll set the posts and pour concrete around that to lock them in. Up next, we cut the real stringers out of pressure-treated wood, and not only that, it is ground contact rated pressure-treated wood, and it's KDAT, kiln dried after treatment. That's one of the few types you can get in a two x 12 that's ground contact rated. And that's really important so the bottom of the stringer doesn't rot out where it gets near the ground. We really kind of have a technique of building these porch steps that I really like. We've been doing it over and over and over on the last several houses. And then we got here and I couldn't even do it that way because we had a different scenario with this fill dirt and so that's why we're adapting to this method right here. Now, I have actually never, ever even done a set of steps just like this. Like, this is the first time I've ever done it this way because this is kind of what the site demanded, basically. And so we're just sort of making this up as we go, but I think it's going to be really good. There's a million ways you can build steps out of all kinds of materials and different things. So this is just one way to do it. Well said, Jamie. And if you do construction long enough, you'll realize the same thing, that you're probably going to have to do the same type of project about 25 different ways, depending on the certain situation you have on each project. One step that was very important here, since we're putting these posts in before we pour concrete around them, is to brace everything plumb in all directions, making sure that the spacing was good, and also that the stringers are coming perfectly 90 degrees off the house, like meaning the set of stairs is coming square off of the deck. Trying to figure this out because this is not like my normal deal. So, um, Jason's bringing in a six by six. We're going to put a six by six right here. Boom. Connecting this and that. That's going to make a good place for my stringer to butt into and hang on. But because of the way the grain is on these stringers, I'm a little bit worried about just toe screwing it in through the, uh, the end of the stringer. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a notch like this on the stringers that go in between and i'm going to actually put another six by six down here like right there so i'll have like double six by six and that's kind of going to act like my little footer because i'm just thinking now after thinking about it if i pour a concrete pad on this filter and then it settles we'll see the concrete pad could just drop right out from under the stair stringers but the whole set of steps won't drop because these posts these posts go way down into the ground and sit on another footer. So really this footer for these two posts is gonna carry the whole load. So there's really no point in putting a footer right here on the flat, I'm thinking, the slab. I don't think I'm gonna do it. Would you do it? I wouldn't. I, don't th I think six it's- Six by six connected to those, bridges it over, that's all you need. It's like a bridge. Yeah. Bridge step. Bridge step. Typically when I'm building porch steps, I would cut all my stringers, I screw them to the edge of the band right here on the deck, and then I go ahead and cut my bottom riser piece, which is also like a two by material, the same as the stringers, and I will like make it all into one frame piece, and then I pour a little pad of concrete under it to support it. That's really all there is to it. In this case, we, we kind of have something different going on because it's landing on some filter. We have about three feet of filter, 
So I didn't feel comfortable just pouring a little six inch pad on top of fill dirt. What we decided to do is dig down about four feet with a post hole digger and pour a concrete pad under each of these posts. So that's gonna carry the weight of the steps out here and keep it from settling. Didn't the doctor say he only had to wear the boot like two weeks? How long's it been, Ray? Is this true? No, I can't walk talk. for six weeks. Dude, I saw him up walking around behind the truck without the <laughs> boot just fine. And then he puts it on and comes over here and acts all like he can't walk. Whatever. I don't know. Talk to Jared. With the post now in their final position and plumbed, we could go ahead and pour some concrete around the post. And this is not to support the post vertically. There's a footing underneath the post for that. This is to support the post in the side to side and the front to back if someone were to grab a hold of this thing and pull on it. Yeah, there we go. Get that. Shake it in. Yep, all the way around. You missing all the help, Jay? We got jono has gone on vacation. Ray's out. Arlo just got a hip replacement. Yeah, no. It's all you. I love it. You love it? Dude, job security, bro. I can do anything I want. And you ain't gonna fire me. I don't anyone here to work. <laughs> With the perimeter framework now done on this set of steps, the next step is to actually fill in the intermediate stringers. And we're putting these stringers on a 16 inch center. That way we can use composite decking. And I've heard people recommend even 12 inch center stringers, which is not a bad idea, I'll say. One good bit of stair building advice is that when you increase the run, you should actually decrease the rise and that makes them walk better. Let's redo what you just did there. That's pretty important with the level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting stringers. Oh, right, right. I thought you were joking. For no, no. Not joking. <laughs> for well, real. Well, I drew a line, but it's really best to check to make sure these are, like, perfectly, like, it doesn't rock or tip or nothing. It's just they're all touching. See? Pro tip. Same time. Pro okay. touching tip. Hey. I'm under the steps here. I'm going to be installing a board that I call the hanger board. It's going to get mounted to the back of these vertical cuts here you see the way that the board is cut there's a grain line running here and it could actually snap pretty easily because of the notch in the tread it runs right there so the whole heel of this I call it the heel needs to be supported and help support the actual weight of the uh, the load on the steps so this board is going to do that very job it's going to mount here through the back from the back and then I'm going to take these pieces of blocking and actually overlap that through the band and through the piece of the hanger and actually support this whole top end in that fashion. I think it's a good way to do it. I've been doing it this way a lot, and it seems to be fine. Hey, Ray, how long has he been talking there, bud? 45 seconds. Mm. I mean, that's not bad compared to usual. Yeah, You're in charge, bud. <laughs> you got to cut him off if you got to. Next step is decking. I just forgot to get the boards this day, so <laughs> I ran by Lowe's the next morning. It's another day. <laughs> Jason just volunteered to stain, right? Dude, the times are changing, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, so with Ray out, Jason's the new paint guy and stain guy. He does a pretty good job, so he might be the permanent stain guy, paint guy. Next, we started installing the risers and we're using pressure treated wood here again instead of the decking boards because this rise is slightly larger than the width of a decking board, which is only five and a half inches. Solid risers like this used to not be required by code here, but now they are and it's considered part of your railing system so you can't have more than a four inch space between your treads. Let me get the dirt off of it. Right there. Yeah. I thought this was a bulldozer. <laughs> it's actually a pry bar. We're finally onto the decking and we're having a big debate <laughs> again. Dang it. So, you know, the ends of these things look like a moustache. These things, what are uh, these The decking things? boards the right decking there. The decking boards, yeah, okay. And so if we just hang that off an inch on these ends, that's not gonna look good. No, you'll see all the little thingies. Yeah, but it's gonna be a lot of work to do like a miter and a return and all the blocking on each step, but I think that's what we're gonna have to do to make it look, you know, good. I think we have to. So that's gonna be a lot of work. Great. <laughs> That's what I was hoping you'd say. So I usually tell clients that composite decking is more labor and will cost a little bit more money in that realm as well. And this is why you don't have to do all these steps if you're using a solid pressure treated deck board. 
or anything else like that. Something I want to point out that I'm doing here is I'm actually tacking these blocks in place with a finish gun so that they don't move around while I fasten them with these big heavy duty screws. And finally we could actually start installing the decking. Finally! It took us I don't know how many days. <laughs> I don't know. Just like the main part of the deck, we're starting with the outside pieces here and they're hanging off one inch like a nosing, just like the piece of decking up top will hang off one inch. We mentioned that in a previous video so that stairs can go anywhere up on this deck. What you got? Well, I think this is really important right here. We have a post that has to go against the house, against the corner board, and we're gonna be using post caps on here. And we have a post cap here, but it's actually stuck to the other post. Um, but you I'm measured doing, it. I did. I measured it so that I could space this post off of the corner board by just enough for the rim of the cap to clear. Real it, smart. If you put it tight, <laughs> how are you going to put a post cap on it? Don't know. So that, that's a good tip. Leave, yeah. Leave the space. Yeah, this is anchored really well to the house. And then we're going to use some long screws and actually lag this thing all the way through Ooh, to, be fun. to the spacer, through the spacer. Nice. Yep. And the last step is to build the railings between our posts and we're using our cable rails just like we did on the rest of the decking and actually that's covered in a previous video but here it is again installing the cable rails on these slanted sections to give us a finished safe set of good walking stairs. This also means we're completely done with the outside finish of this home. Our next step is to jump inside and start working there. Thanks for building with us. We really appreciate it. What we're gonna do now is actually take a couple days off because the drywall is going in our project there. We don't do drywall, so we're gonna let the drywall guys do their thing, and I'm gonna take a few days. Well, I mean, I'm gonna paint the outside of my house, and Jason's gonna help me, because I promised my wife that I would. If you've enjoyed this video or learned something from it, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, that does help us out. Thanks again, we'll see you on the next one. Also, we do have some new merchandise for sale, the new print version of the Perkins Builder Brothers logo. There it is, you can buy that on a shirt, or a tank top and lots of stuff. I'm gonna to try to get it on hats as well, but that works better on print than our YouTube logo and that's why I did it. So uh, I like it and you should check that out if you're looking to get some new shirts. Come here, Jason. Check this out. This is our uh, neighbor Cody. Ken here. Watch this. Cody, hey, hey Cody. Hey, can you hand it up? <laughs> Boy, how about this thing? Hey, can you get that? Go get the hat. Hand it up. <laughs> Boy. And it doesn't you matter. are awesome. It can, be, it can be something that's actually pretty fragile. Hey, Cody, can you get those? Good boy. <laughs> you know, down down at the river, I'll take him down the river. We'll go for a walk. And if there's a can or a bottle on a picnic table there, he'll go ahead. I can give him a command. He'll run over, jump up on the picnic table, grab the can or bottle, run over, and put it into recycling. Wow. And at home, he's got about 50 different toys. And in the morning, I'll just tell him, hey, clean up. And you run through the house, find every toy that's out of the toy box, and put them all back in the toy box. That's better than my kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've had, I've had a bunch of parents ask me, hey, can you take my kids home and train them? <laughs>